So how's everybody enjoying the uh, conference so far? You having a great time? Awesome. I am too. And I just wanted to say it's so awesome to see so many GitHub friends in one place. And it's really good that we're all here in this room right now together. So let's get started. Pick up the horn, and there you go. Sometimes it helps to warm up a little bit, I guess. So uh, that song, that song I just played, does anybody recognize that song? That song I just played is called Begrüßung in German. Does anybody know what that means? I know you know what that means. Greetings, that's right, welcome. It means welcome in German. And it is typically played at the beginning of a hunt to welcome all hunters. We welcome you today. My name is Jim Cole, and this is Jim Fox. He's my driver today. We welcome you today to our hunt for better ways to share localized knowledge within our work teams. Speaking of hunts, recently I found myself deep in a forest surrounded by a family of squirrels called a scurry. You know, as I looked up at all the trees, I realized that squirrels are some of the best accidental developers in the world. Squirrels develop forests. Now, if only they could remember where they put their building materials. As this little guy chewed on my boots, he told me his story about squirrel works. I think there might be a few things that we all might learn from him. Things were chaotic at Squirrel Works. The developers scrambled furiously to deliver their next products. Many shook their heads and tails, wondering how they'd ever meet their schedules. As at Squirrel Works, the most expensive part of our development is us, the cost of developers. Often enough, little is invested in, all the, in helping us to learn all the proprietary things that we need to be productive. As a result, we too feel that crunch to deliver. Now the developing forest had changed as a result of downsizing seasoned squirrels. As its inhabitants rebuilt, there was fierce competition for scarce resources. The owners, however, of the forest, they expected business to go on as usual. Have you ever been frustrated arriving to such a team? Maybe. You worked hard to keep up. With the rapidly changing systems and the need to absorb all that tribal knowledge, it slowed your momentum. Perhaps you also were motivated to find better ways to learn. Now, despite this, there was much anticipation in the squirrel work scurry. This is Poppy, and he was busy finishing up a new restful interface. But he's, he's excited and anxious. He's very anxious and excited as he waited the news. Well, what do you know? It's a squirrel, he's a proud poppy. Um, everybody meet Zippy, he's our protagonist today. He weighed in at 21 acorns um, in weight. So now, new kits were born several times a year, and each time the scurry was totally unprepared, it seemed like. Like baby kits, new developers arrive on our teams, somewhat innocent and impressionable, and we never seem to know when they will arrive. Now, Zippy, like all kits, he relied heavily on the scurry for care and feeding. He consumed the already scarce acorns at a rapid pace. Just like us as developers, we grab every precious fact that we can. 
Now, this was a big time drain on all the older squirrels, especially considering that there were more kits to come with each litter. As Zippy grew, he became a bit more self-reliant. And it wouldn't be too long before Zippy would be expected to follow in his poppy's footsteps at Squirrel Works. Now, Zippy soon learned that acorns were more than just food. Acorns are powerful nuggets of information. They can be an immediate snack or planted to grow strong trees that produce even more acorns. In the same way, our development knowledge can be planted and grown into learning trees, which they grow into learning homes, actually, which produce abundant acorns to feed the squirreliest of developers. Now, you may not know this, but squirrels' teeth never stop growing. They must cut their teeth on acorns to stay healthy. Like developers, by nature, squirrels are constantly craving something to cut their teeth on, or they'll go crazy. As developers, cutting our teeth helps us to master our craft and be self-reliant. Now, some things are well known by all scurries. But as Zippy grows and asks questions specific to his world, he discovered that these acorns aren't so easy to find. In fact, as developers, we need similar acorns of knowledge to do our work. Sometimes, like Zippy, we don't know whom to ask for help. Curious, you guys, what kinds of acorns are you typically look, looking for in your own forest? Anyone? Anybody? How about things like your application domain, the domain knowledge that you have as a company, or maybe things you need to know about architecture, diagrams that really you can't find those in code, coding standards, release steps, and of course there's always code, right? That's how we learn, but not all the things that we need are always in code, right? And that, that's a bit of a problem, but code is still an important way to learn, but there's other things that go beyond code. The list goes on and on. So, Zippy watched the older squirrels bury their acorns in all kinds of strange places. Their intentions were good in storing them, but these places are clearly not conducive to their purpose. <laughs> Wait for it. it, it cracks me up. Now I gotta tell you, these two pets actually live together at Shannon Apple's house. And uh, this is Jax and Wally the squirrel. And they haven't been doing too well in health lately, I found out. So there it is. And uh, there's a website here that's in the presentation. And if you'd like to help with some of their bills, uh, she's got that site there. But I'm very grateful that I was able to use this from her today. So which places are your teams using to store information? Anyone? This kind of information. Where do you store it? Volunteers, anybody? GitHub repo, okay, that's awesome. Google Docs. Google Docs. A wiki. Anyone else? Okay, those are some good examples. <laughs> yes, all right, but those are, they, they, the adhesive wears off. It just drives you crazy, right? So there's also email, right? That's one way I see way too often, sometimes it drives me crazy, is you keep seeing the same information recur. SharePoint, uh, Google Drive, Jive, anybody using Jive at all? Um, anyways, are those working out for you? Yeah, all right. Yeah, it's, it's a tough business, let me just tell you that. No matter which tool you're using, it's a bit of a tough business. Well, anyways, let's get back to Zippy. Thank you for your candid responses. So, how long do you think it takes Zippy to find his acorn answer in here? Well, I'll save you and Zippy some time. Zippy hunted for acorns in email, which tended to be a very popular squirrel way of sharing knowledge. And these are very advanced squirrels. How many times have you received an email containing an answer, but you don't remember where you put it? Or how many times were you sure you sent an answer to another developer, and you still can't find it when they ask about it? So Zippy realized how quickly these answers became obsolete as well. Now, one day Zippy spent an, acorn, an hour hunting for an acorn. When he found one, he spent another 30 minutes cracking it open, only to find a nasty weevil. 
Acorn weevils burrow inside acorns, and they eat the insides, and there really isn't anything useful left, as you can see right here. This actually happened to him a lot, and it wasted his time and energy. So here's the deal. Time and constant environment changes, they eat away at our information like a weevil. It grows stale. Frustrated, Zippy, he thought he'd ask other squirrels for help. So his first search for help, however, was in getting acorns was very unfortunate. He quickly found that some squirrels, they'll fight to death over their territory. Zippy was scared to approach these guys, and he could never take any advantage of the information they might have, which is really kind of sad, right? Because you might know somebody. You might know that squirrel. I don't know. Do you guys know any squirrels with big heads? Zippy found some squirrels who only shared if it improved their prowess amongst the other developers. Unfortunately, these guys don't realize that if everyone shared their prized acorns, if they shared that with everyone, it would greatly boost their standing in the community. Finally, Zippy went to see the most senior squirrel, but she was always too busy and kind of hard to find, even when she was actually available. Sometimes Zippy got answers that really didn't help at all. Yep, these are real life examples where we work of internal ac acronyms, not acronyms, acronyms. Uh, jargon, shop talk, basically. <laughs> Using an acronym to answer a question is probably not uh, the best strategy. These are technically acorns worth keeping, but they're disguised in terms that nobody really understands, especially baby squirrels. After almost seeing his mentor in a close call with a Lamborghini, Zippy was amazed at how much the scurry relied on these methods of sharing acorns. Okay, so every squirrel needs to feel competent, and so do we as developers. Zippy was no exception. And sometimes the gap between here and there, it seemed impossible. You see, the gap between what you know and what you need to know is too wide, and it feels like you'll never be able to get to the other side. A squirrel, or for that matter, a developer, shouldn't have to fill this gap with themselves. Now, Zippy felt left out in a forest of incompetence and waste with no water or acorns to sustain himself. Small efforts felt moment momentous, and his work was way more expensive than it needed to be. It took longer to finish because he spent so much time and energy looking for what he needed. Poor Zippy. Somebody help. So frustrated, Zippy, he wanted to find a better way. He really wanted to help his scurry. He wanted to make things easier for his scurry. So he did what I normally do when I get stuck. He decided to take a walk and clear his head and think about things. On his walk, Zippy met a contractor squirrel named Rocky, who was from a faraway scurry. As they talked about where they were from, Zippy confided his troubles to his new friend. Rocky was very excited, okay, to tell Zippy that they once had these same problems, but you know what, not anymore. Come with me, Rocky said. I want to introduce you to someone. Rocky introduced Zippy to Octacat. Octacat taught him about a better way to storage, store and manage acorn answers. Does anyone know this cat? If you do, you probably know some of our story already. But you might also know him as Octobi Juan Catnobi. <laughs> Zippy, you need to follow the path to GitHub. GitHub provides a place to store and manage acorn content using the same process which humans use for building software. By creating content using the lightweight markdown language and storing it in a repository, Jekyll transforms these answer acorns into an HTML forest of beautiful learning trees. Zippy, uh, what's the GitHub path? Yes, Zippy, you need to follow the path to GitHub. I have an easy way for you to remember. If you do these things, you and your teams will be more productive. Zippy, follow me closely as we begin our journey. The process for getting content into GitHub is easy. 
First, set up a repository and fork your own copy. Then create content in Markdown. Commit it into your fork and create a pull request. Peer review differences and communicate your ideas. Once everyone agrees that the changes are good, merge them into the repository. So everybody knows this in their sleep by now. This process is so strong on communicating and reviewing content. But, but Obi-Wan, why, why use Markdown? Well, let me tell you, it frees you to focus on content instead of HTML, or like this guy, using a different kind of content. The format can be easily understood, or easily compared. There's a historical record which shows all the changes you've made and you can lint the content to ensure everything is in the right place. Let's take a closer look at Markdown in a nutshell. For structuring content, like headers, you can structure your document, create headers with this and, not yet, and you can create a table of contents that'll be automatically generated. Also, you can use lists, and you can also use tables. It's very straightforward. For basics, Bold, italics, underlines, strike through emoji links, and images. And really, a really nice feature of Markdown is syntax highlighting for presenting your code. Very powerful. If you'd like to know more about Markdown, go to the Daring Fireball site. Oh, um, whoops, sorry, Zippy. Octacat, he's been helping a pack of hunting dogs, and he included the wrong slide. Um, but anyways, um, Putting all of this stuff into a repository isn't helpful unless the acorns are retrievable once they go into the forest. You want a mechanism for allowing squirrels to be able to find the acorn that they need quickly. By adding information called front matter to the front of each acorn's markdown, you can use it to help with searches. Jekyll and Lunar use front matter to build a smart index for search. This data can contain title, as you can see up there, tags, or anything a squirrel might want to add. And then the search index builder utilizes those fields to configure these and create an index for you, which can be used. The next lesson, Zippy. Zippy was complaining about having to look everywhere for acorns stored willy-nilly. GitHub helps with that by keeping everything in one place. Here, acorns will grow into a beautiful forest of oaks for your scurry members to live and thrive. Where you plant and maintain your acorns impacts future growth and benefits everyone down the line. Zippy, it is very important to remember. Make sure that you don't add acorns that are already in the forest. It is important for your content to be unique. If, someone, if something already exists, enhance it. The most effective content will be simple and easy to read. This has a lot to do with writing style and discipline. Keep things short and comprehensive. If your topic is, topic is getting too long, break it down into its smallest components. This is the art of working bottom up to create the simplest, most readable content. Zippy started to walk ahead and he exclaimed, surely this is straightforward so far, master. It even looks easy. Octocat looked back in disbelief. There is still so much to learn, young one. Culture change will be a difficult, but necessary and very important part of making this whole thing work. Changing minds and hearts to different ways of thinking takes other skills which you will learn. Keep communicating in the meantime, get others involved, and remember everybody owns these acorns. There are many acorns to gather and arrange. This might be very overwhelming. Sometimes it helps to imagine all the acorns in the forest and how they fit together. If this seems too hard, envision, envision yourself in the tallest tree in the forest on the highest limb. Look from the top down and arrange all the acorns in your mind according to which tree branches they really belong to. Then use naming to identify and order all your acorns into a taxonomy which structures your forest. There's a few more lessons, Zippy. Now, GitHub creates a pages site for every repository and fork. I call this instrumentation. Jekyll is always running in the background and processing modified markdown pages, files into viewable pages. 
Your site will be current with new commits from anyone. Incremental changes will only rebuild what is necessary. Now, once you've mastered creating and committing your content acorns using Markdown and GitHub, there is more instrumentation to explore. You can set up and run your own local Jekyll server, and it's very easy to do this. Then use your favorite ID as an authoring system, IDE as an authoring system along your uh, local Jekyll server. Just out of curiosity, how many people in here use IntelliJ as their IDE? Maybe eight or so? How many people use Atom as their primary IDE? That's encouraging. How many people use Visual Studio? Cool, kind of a nice mix. And then how, I, I could say like Vi or Vim, or there's probably those guys, gals. And then anything else? We're not. He, oh, I love, yes. <laughs> Richard Stallman Page, never mind, to say that. Um, anyways, I'm not going there. <laughs> anyways, each ID can be enhanced with feature rich markdown plugins. So, for example, IntelliJ has Markdown Navigator. Has anybody ever heard of that, Markdown Navigator? It's a, a fellow, um, Vladimir, has a great product there. I encourage it. It's, it's about 20 bucks. But um, if he said that I could, like, tell you guys that you get a discount. If you want, I can send that out via some information. You'll get in a little bit. And then um, Adam has Markdown Writer, so you can add that. And then Visual Studio has Web Essentials. And there's probably other plugins that you can use, but these are ones that, that have helped. So this si setup is nice for writing and testing if you're without internet access. But I will tell you, you will notice that your server's startup time will increase with the amount of content and processing that you add, OK? Now, beyond Markdown, there's much more to use in creating an awesome Jekyll site. Jekyll is built upon Ruby, and luckily, you can run that without a religious conversion. Now, Ruby functionality is packaged in gems. GitHub provides a GitHub Pages gem, which packages all the Jekyll dependencies. So if you're running in the enterprise and you're doing a local version, if you use this gem, it will keep you current with the Jekyll product as it evolves, which is really, really nice. Ben Balder and all those guys, I don't know if you know Ben, he's been really helpful in putting that together. So. You would definitely want to use that if you go this route. All right, so back to the GitHub Pages gem. The GitHub Pages gem provides access to more gems which add functionality to Jekyll. For example, the Shopify Liquid gem, next slide, gives you programming power to build content on your pages. So why might you use that? You can build a content hierarchy, table of contents, page to page navigation. You can basically do anything you don't want to have to like type in over and over. You can use this. It's like a preprocessor over all your markdown, and you can embed you can embed a liquid inside of it. So it's really, really nice. I'll show you some examples in a little bit. And then there's the Jekyll CoffeeScript gem. It lets you write JavaScript more elegantly. How many folks here like to use CoffeeScript? Anyone? Maybe a little bit. Okay. And then there's the SAS gem, which allows you to style your site elements, tables, and images more concisely. How many people use SAS, SCCS? You do like a lot, okay. And then the Rouge gem provides beautiful syntax highlighting for your code snippets, which you can then style with SAS. That's really powerful, and I've been working to get more of our developers to use that. And the Minima gem provides Jekyll's default theme, which you can customize to your needs. This is really new. And included in Minima is Discus support, so you can add comments to a page, and Google Analytics. So with Jekyll and your own creativity, you can render stunning pages, well, maybe stunning, um, which contain a hierarchy. Right there, a hierarchy on the left-hand side, a speedy search index from your front matter, and a table of contents for every page. And this was all generated automatically. OK, so Zippy's eyes widen. That looks so amazing, amazing and easy, Octocat. Everyone will want to use this. Octocat side, maybe so, but any squirrel can use these tools to add acorns of low value. Yeah, so low value acorns. Squirrels can be lazy and blind to what they already know. 
This is called the curse of knowledge. They think that others already know what they know. How many times have you read something or had something explained to you as though it were the most obvious thing in the world, only to be left more confused than before? A little context goes a long way. And Zippy was wondering, well, well what is this context? Octocat stretched out his arms to show that context fills the gap between what you know and what other squirrels may not yet know. Squirrels are content to add the how part. And as developers, we know about this a lot. But often leave out the most important part, context. This is like finding only an acorn cap and calling it an acorn. Yet, it is not a complete acorn. What, why, when, where, and how are just as important as the how. They provide context. Simply adding an acorn doesn't mean that the job is done. We have to generate acorns that other squirrels can actually consume. Context helps create complete acorns of true value. So Zip, Zippy jogged ahead again. Master, master, I, I think that I'm ready. Octocat remained motionless. There is one more lesson which you still must learn. Don't let your acorns rot and keep your forest pruned. Your content and tools need to evolve with the organization. Here are some things which you might want to consider evolving. First of all, viewership. You need to know and engage your audience, right? So analytics, that's really big, and you want to get to that soon. You want to identify the needs for content. You might want to treat your new content as a campaign, like around a big area that you might be rolling out. And notification, people need to know that something new is there. And one other area is collaboration. I, I wanted to mention that. And then the next area to evolve into is content. So you're going to have lots of content, right? You probably got Word documents, PowerPoint, all that. There are tools like Pandoc that, would, that can help migrate that content in. And PowerPoint, eh, not so much. Uh, but you can unzip images and bring them into your repository. Next. So you might want to start branching out with more content, like package setups. So we, you might want to package up how you release your software. You can have it right out of your learning center. Quick cards, source code, like with Plunker, if you want to do more dynamic, brief videos, Jupyter Notebooks. These are all things that can be brought in. Good. And finally, content editing. Via an IDE, there's also this Jekyll.admin project that works locally that just came out. And uh, it's got a nice interface, more of like a WYSIWYG thing you can put over the top and, and take your users right in to edit the content directly. There's Ghost, Metalsmith, Mr. Hyde. You can edit content on your Android. And there's some variants in all these. these are, the class of these are static um, site generators. And Octopress is one example. OK. So, Carrying the evolutionary theme, quality. So you can do markdown lending with Atom, just like we do with our code. You can look for well-formed markdown, and there might be other things you want to check. Um, we've been toying with the idea of having content placement functions. So if a piece of content arrives as a developer doesn't know where to put it, what if you could introspect on that and make a suggestion where it might best fit in a hierarchy? And of course, test cases. And finally, efficiency. You want to reduce your build time, auto-optimize, use asset pipeline, automate liquid, and keep up with communities, because there's so much happening. I was just talking with uh, some of the folks here and some of the ideas that just keep evolving. It's amazing. And then finally, repositories. So we like to keep documentation close to our products. So content and packages in the actual code, we, we want to separate those. Right now, we've got them together. But, and then finally, with this principle of having all your code with your content, you might have multi multiple repositories. So you might want to build a search index that can span multiple repositories. So these are some evolutionary things that, um, uh oh, there we go. So these are some things that um, Octocat passed on to Zippy. And at the bottom, Stefan Baumgartner wrote this excellent article called Using a Static Site Generator at Scale Lessons Learned. I stumbled on this, and I'm like, oh my goodness. This is the same journey we've been on. And he had so many great thoughts and like where to take things next. It's awesome. OK. So we've just covered some really important lessons, Zippy. 
We learned that process. Use the GitHub process. Same software process we use. Use it to write your, your uh, documentation. Retrievable. As long as it can be found, you've got a very powerful tool. Keep it all in one place. We don't have things going here, there, and everywhere. They're in one place, GitHub. Dry, don't repeat yourself. Uncomplicated. If you write well, you take the time to do it right, this thing will last for so many other developers and can help them. Culture change, a really big one. We've talked a lot about that here at GitHub. That's a hard job. Um, and taxonomy, you know, if you want to have a taxonomy, it's great. Depends on how much information you have. Instrumentation, there's a lot there to just take advantage of out of the box. To me, value is the most important one of all because people want to benefit from all the time <clears throat> or lack of time sometimes that people take to do this. But the more time we put into this up front, the more value it will be, and it scales. That scales. That's where you get your payoff for all the other developers that use it. And finally, evolve. This is exciting. The world is changing around us. Jekyll is evolving. All these tools are evolving. Your organization is evolving. And you're evolving. Right? So we're all learning. This is awesome. OK. So if you remember to do these, you will be productive. So Zippy returned to his scurry, very excited to share his new issues. You can probably imagine what happened. Everyone else seemed skeptical. After all, they'd always done things exactly the same way. Tribal ownership was a very strong force to overcome. But Zippy, he persisted, remembering what Octocat had taught him. He wanted to create a learning forest and call it Squirrel University. Slowly but surely, he started working through the barriers. First, Zippy made it a point to get management's backing. With their help and support, the transition surely would be much easier. Depending on your management types, this could be your biggest challenge. Hopefully, it's much easier than this. And no, this is my boss, actually. He didn't make me come in on Saturday. But anyways, um, so how would this be supported in your teams if you went to your manager or you just started doing it? You think you'd get the air cover to do this? Yes? No? Don't know? All right. So after gaining his manager's support, Zippy added his new learnings into their process. Zippy and his managers made these changes official and broadly communicated these across the scurry. No longer could scurry members continue to do things the way they always had. Now when things change during a scroll print, their code, their, in their sprint, team members were required to also update these acorns in Squirrel U, the information part that goes with. Now Zippy knew he couldn't do this by himself. He observed that the gray squirrels in the scurry were the best leaders in planting acorns. They instinctively contributed to growing the trees of knowledge in the forest. However, because there wasn't a designated place for them to plant, the acorns often grew in the wrong places, or worse, were forgotten. So recruiting the gray squirrels was very important to getting the forest started and beginning to thrive. After that, the other squirrel breeds copied the gray squirrel's habits and efforts. Now, speaking of leadership, Zippy is eager to share this video of a TED Talk by Derek Cyrus on starting a movement. This whole process is depicted in less than three minutes. Seemed to really describe what it hit Zippy's experience was. So take a look. So ladies and gentlemen, at TED we talk a lot about leadership and how to make a movement. So let's watch a movement happen start to finish in under three minutes and dissect some lessons from it. First, of course you know, a leader needs the guts to stand out and be ridiculed. <laughs> But what he's doing is so easy to follow. So here's his first follower with a crucial role. He's going to show everyone else how to follow. Now notice that the leader embraces him as an equal. So now it's not about the leader anymore. It's about them, plural. Now there he is calling to his friends. Now if you notice that the first follower is actually an underestimated form of leadership in itself. It takes guts to stand out like that. The first follower is what transforms a lone nut into a leader. <laughs> And here comes a second follower. Now it's not a lone nut, it's not two nuts. Three is a crowd, and a crowd is news. So a movement must be public. It's important to show not just the leader, but the followers, because you find that new followers emulate the followers, not the leader. Now here come two more people, and immediately after, three more people. Now we've got momentum. This is the tipping point. Now we've got a movement. <laughs> Thank you.
So and yes, that's how you do start a movement. Maybe not in the exact same way, but anyways, that's a, a favorite video that Zippy always wants to watch. Have you guys seen that video before? Any of you? Yep. So anyways, these, lead, these leaders converted these passionate squirrels into a forest evangelist. They enthusiastically spread the word and they got their hands dirty, really important. They organized a large amount of known acorns. They identified acorns that were still needed. They taught other squirrels how to contribute their valuable acorns. Zippy also pulled together a group of expert squirrels and gave them jobs as the gatekeepers to the forest content. Get it? Quality acorns. Um, they ensured that the only quality acorns made it into the forest by checking that the acorns were relevant. In other words, there were oak acorns, not walnuts. The acorns are complete with context. We talked about that earlier. The acorns were accurate with sufficient detail. The, the acorns were not duplicates. And that the acorns were being planted in the right places. By inspecting pool requests, they addressed issues before each acorn was even planted. From there, the community started training. They learned how to use GitHub in the process of planting these acorns, strengthening their acorn planting skills. Along the way, Zippy and his leaders were there to help reinforce the concepts that OctaCat had introduced. By planning for these things in their sprints and working on these a little bit each day, their forest was growing. He also introduced paired prosing, like paired programming, encouraging squirrels to work together to plant their acorns. Just like with coding, having more than one set of eyes on the task helps to create better, more comprehensive content. Zippy encouraged the scurry to team up with other members of the forest. This exercise brought in fresh skill sets and perspectives. They were able to tap the best experts and get the best information. They found the strongest writers and collaborators. I think that's a t-shirt possibility there. It became every squirrel's job to actively prune the growing trees, to remove dead information, and to update changes. Throughout this whole process, Zippy learned the, the importance of patience. This was not an overnight process. He had to remain diligent and disciplined in continuing to show scurry members the right way. Growth of any tree takes time, so you have to keep watering the soil and encourage the community to help and keep planting. Now, an oak tree produces a decent amount of acorns in its early life, but after a few seasons, it explodes with thousands of acorns. Knowledge planted in the learning repository is much the same. If the tree stays healthy, there's a tipping point where the volume of quality acorns that it provides is overwhelmingly valuable. So finally, the squirrels and the scurry are communicating and they're sharing their acorns. And you know, these Pokemon intruders got in too. Um, but you know, whatever. So Zippy Scurry has learned that instead of only eating acorns for immediate gratification, those well-planted acorns produce new trees that become learning homes, which in turn produce even more acorns which feed, which feed lots of squirrely developers. Okay, so that's a Zippy's story as I heard it. Since then, Zippy has made tremendous progress on Squirrel U. I thought you might be interested in his progress, so let's take a look. Jim? Oh. So this is uh, actually a live site. You can go over, you can type in uh, Markdown. Just click on uh, Markdown Overview there, just so you can get a feel for it. There's the hierarchy. It's all uh, lit up, whichever topic selected. Scroll down a little bit, go a little further. You can see uh, syntax highlighting at work, and you can see some of the other elements we talked about. Keep going all the way to the bottom. You'll see this little uh, next page thing that got added. There's syntax highlighting. I think it looks nice, nice way to present your code. If you spend the time in it, other, others benefit. All right. So anyways, that's the, uh, the, the live site that the, uh, the Zippy put together. Our team has continued to build upon Zippy's efforts. We are using these tools in our work teams. We have 60 plus developers involved in gathering content, and these investments of time are really paying us back. New team members are coming up faster and running faster. Competent developers have plenty to sharpen their teeth on. Our senior architects they stay focused on their primary jobs. And most importantly, efforts are spent on higher level problems, not problems we've already solved, right? Why do we have to keep solving the same problems? It really help. So I guess you could say tribal knowledge has really transformed into real learning trees. 
Oh, um, before we get too far from the scurry, I, I wanted to give a couple shout outs. First of all, I want to thank GitHub for this privilege of sharing with you today and also for providing such a great product. Also, I want to thank my team and especially my manager, Jim, who's been so supportive in creating our learning environment in this presentation. So, and perhaps most importantly, I want to thank all of you guys and gals for coming here today, for joining us in our never-ending hunt for acorns. Now, I'm serious about this. Really starts with each one of you. And it doesn't have to be a site like this, but it's something like that that's so important. You can make, make a huge difference for your team. Please choose abundance over scarcity. There are, uh, as you leave, there are acorns back there. I really would be honored if you would take an acorn with you as a memento and also as a symbol of what we've talked about today. And uh, plant these acorns in your teams, grow them into your own healthy information forest. And finally, enjoy the benefits of having more time and energy to produce great products. Oh, uh, one more thing. Zippy is reminding us of how easy it is to get started. So all you need to do is fork a copy of Zippy's repository. It's right here. And on that repository, you'll also find a quick card. They're handing those out, too. I'd like you to take one of those as well. And then play with the squirrel you cite. It's all right there. And if you don't like the code, remember, squirrels wrote it. Um, <laughs> so Zippy looks forward to meeting you again. If you have any questions or are interested in collaborating, please come on up. Thank you. I'm Jim Cole and Jim Fox. Thank you so much. Have a good day.